Photoshop masks and layers are also really useful for changing the color and effects of various things in a picture. Let's see how we can change all the colors in this portrait of the dog. I'm going to start by two finger tapping on the background layer, choosing duplicate. So I have a copy of this layer so that I always have the dog. And each time I make a change, I'll make a new layer. I'm going to call this one hat. And then I'm going to get my object selection tool and drag a rectangle around the hat. So I can see that the hat is now selected. I'll tap the add layer mask. And then I'll tap to open the adjustments and choose solid color. I like this color, so I'll say OK. And then I'm going to open the blend mode and choose hue. So that kind of gives us blue color to the whole picture, and I only want it on the hat. So I'm going to Option or Alt tap on the line between the color and the hat. This clips the color into the mask of the hat. Press Option or Alt, and then click on the line between the layers, and the layer above will only affect the layer right below it. It's a little bright, so I want to reduce it. I'm going to open the Options menu again and choose Levels, and I'm going to move the sliders over to make it darker, but notice the whole picture is darker as well. So I'm going to use my Option or Alt key and tap on the line below the adjustment layer, and now it clips the adjustment into the hat mask as well. Now I'm going to make another copy of the background, and this one I'm going to call Shirt. I'm going to get my Object Selection tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the shirt area of the picture so that the shirt gets selected. And I'm going to tap the Add Layer Mask, so I have a mask for the shirt, and then I'll tap to open the Adjustment menu and choose Solid Color again. I'm going to get a purple color, and click OK. And I'm going to use my Blend Modes again, and this time I'm going to choose Overlay, because I like how that makes the purple look on the shirt. And then I will Option or Alt Tap on the line between the purple color and the layer below it and now it clips the purple just in the shirt area of the mask. I'm going to duplicate the background again, and this I'll call background color. And this time I'm going to use the object selection tool to select the whole portrait. So draw a rectangle around the dog and a hat and everything else. Notice I didn't manage to select the whole shirt, so I'm going to switch to my Quick Selection tool by two finger tapping on the tool panel, picking Quick Selection. I'll use my right bracket to make the selection tool bigger, and then I'll just kind of paint it all around there to select the rest of the shirt. I tap on Add Layer Mask. Now I have a mask for the whole dog. I'm going to go to the Adjustment, and I'm going to pick Gradient. I'm going to tap in the color area to see all the various gradients that I could choose. I'm going to open up Blues and pick this one. And click OK. And then I'm going to use the angle to shift the colors around so that I want the darker color at the top and the lighter blue down towards the bottom. And click OK. I'm going to open the blend modes and choose color as my blend mode so that I can see some of the texture on the layer as well as the color I just added. And then I will Option or Alt tap on the line between the gradient layer and the picture layer below it but it added a color to the portrait, not to the background. So I'm going to tap on the layer mask and then press Command or Control I to invert the layer mask. And now the color is applied to the background. I'm going to zoom in because I noticed I don't have all of the edge of the eye of the dog selected. So I'm going to double tap on that layer mask I just made, and go into my Select and Mask window. Choose my brush, and when I paint, oops, I'm erasing, so I'm going to switch over to the minus brush, and now when I paint, I am filling in the missing parts of the eye, and then click OK. 
That looks much better. And now I'm going to experiment by changing the background to a photograph. So I have this picture of a fire hydrant. And I'm just going to click on the background layer and drag it over onto the tab for the portrait and drop it in the middle. Switch to my move tool and then resize it by pulling one of the handles. I notice it's kind of purple and blue. <laughs> That's because it's underneath the adjustment, the underneath the uh, gradient layer. So I'm going to slide it above the gradient layer and now I can see the photograph. Okay, I want to make it a little blurred so that it appears to be further away in the distance. So go to the filter menu, choose blur, and Gaussian blur is a good choice. I'm going to slide that up so that it gets nice and blurry. Click OK. Um, then I realized the hat doesn't really look quite right with this, so we're going to open up the color layer for the hat and use the eyedropper to pick a color from the leaves in the photograph. That looks good. Click OK. And then I want to do one more thing to the photograph to make it feel like it's even further in the background. So I'm going to turn off that gradient layer so it doesn't affect this. And then I'm going to select the photograph layer and slide down and adjust and pick soft light, which kind of gives it a grainy shadow and makes it seem a little further away. 